This is the all new Audi A4. No, really, this is the all new Audi A4. Because looking at it, you think it's just a facelift. But it's really when you get down close to the details, you do realize that this car is all new. Well, we're gonna dig deep under the body, which by the way, is a hundred kilos lighter than before to see just what's in it. The new A4 doesn't stray from the script, wearing the same understated and conservative look as before. But whilst it may not look fresh and exciting, you can't help be impressed with the A4's superb proportion and clean, well-sculpted body. There's lots of serious engineering that's gone into the A4, which despite being longer and wider, it's now 120 kilos lighter than before. Now, Audis are known for their interior quality, but in this A4, Audi has taken it to a different level. The interior finish, the quality, just absolutely top class. The button feels really solid. The aircon vents, it's got this continuous aircon vent across the dashboard, which is very common in Audis. The virtual cockpit over here, which again is now a signature. But it's more than just the design over here. It's just the way the cabin is finished and something so simple as a cigarette light at top, even this has got a delightful knurled finish. There are no shiny plastics, but instead you get these lovely soft touch materials everywhere. And whilst the design again is not very imaginative, it's very functional and the cabin is just a great place to be. Now these compact luxury sedans, they're not really known for backseat space, but the Audi A4, again, best in class room over here. It's not as spacious as, say, a Camry or an Accord, which cost actually cheaper than these cars. But for the class, it's really surprisingly roomy. Now, I'm, I'm pretty short, but even then one can sense that headroom is pretty good. The knee room is pretty good. And what Audi has done is they've really scooped out the backs of the seats, so you get that little bit more space over here. You've also got your own temperature controls for the aircon over here. The hump over here, again, pretty high. So really, this is best as a four-seater. But I must say, it's pretty comfortable and with this armrest in place, you're good to be chauffeured in. The A4's Air high transmission tunnel makes seating three passengers at the back a bit awkward. The boot, however, is a very useful 480 litres. Now this A4 is powered by a 2-litre diesel. Yes, it's the ubiquitous 2-litre TDI, the same diesel that powers a wide range of Volkswagen cars. And in this Audi, this latest iteration just feels terrific. It's silky smooth, very, very quiet, and mated to the seven-speed automatic power delivery is just so seamless. The A4's power delivery is nicely progressive. That's not to say the A4 isn't quick. In fact, the Audi sedan builds up speeds quite deceptively thanks to the smooth engine and linear way in which the healthy peak torque of 400 Newton meters kicks in. Engine response is pretty good too thanks to the reduced turbo lag and the updated 7-speed DSG transmission feels far more alert than before. Now, the ride and handling of the new A4, that also is a big leap forward, but it's not really very sporty. It doesn't have the sharpness of the Jaguar XE or even the agility of a 3 Series. But this car is all about sure-footedness. It gives you a huge sense of confidence at any speed, and really, it's all about relaxed driving. It feels specially good on the highway where the excellent straight line stability gives you immense confidence to hold high speeds all day long. Ride comfort too is simply superb thanks to a supple suspension. But what comes as a pleasant surprise is the A4 steering, which is now quicker and more responsive than anything we've experienced in an Audi sedan. But when you push hard, you'll find the steering is ultimately lacking in feel and the nose-heavy, understeery setup does take away some of the fun factor. 
The new A4 doesn't visually excite, but it's aimed at a wider audience. And looking at the way Audi has aggressively priced its new launches, well, you can expect the base A4 to be priced very competitively under 40 lakh rupees when it goes on sale in September this year. Now, looking at the Audi A4, you might think it's a facelift, but the fact is this car is a quantum leap over the earlier car. It's far more refined, it's far more comfortable. The interiors, they've gone to another level. It may not be sporting, but this car is so easy to use and user friendliness is one of its core attributes. And with this new A4, Audi is now ready to hit back in the compact luxury sedan fight. GTR fans can rejoice because after years of will they, won't they, Nissan has finally decided to launch its legendary sports car in India. And the good news is that it's not the older car they showed at the Auto Expo or the one we got our hands on at the Bud circuit, but the absolute latest version of the GTR. Power, performance, refinement. This is the best GTR. Now, Nissan has launched the new GTR right here at the New York Motor Show. Now, this car is more of an evolution. In fact, it's a bit of a facelift, but there are distinct changes over here. You can see the grille, it's completely new, feels a lot sharper. The styling is a bit edgier, and under the hood is an engine which is 20 bhp more. So that's around 560 plus bhp, which will make this car even quicker. GTR for Nissan is very simple, it's the flagship, it's the icon of the Nissan brand. So GTR means you have two big messages in GTR, Grand Touring and Racing. So it expresses all the technology in terms of power, in terms of driving pleasure. Another talking point are the interiors, they've been completely revamped. Now the interiors was always an issue on the GTR, but this time there's a lot more leather in there. The dashboard, the instrument panel, has been a totally review with a very nice leather touch feel. We have a new steering wheel. We have a, uh, also the seat has been improved. So when you enter into the new GTR, you clearly feel what I call the refinement strategy. It's always something new, always better for the customer. Well, September this year is what Nissan says. They're going to finally launch the GTR. Nissan hopes this hero car will give a leg up to the Nissan brand, which has been struggling quite a bit in the Indian market. And some other news, one of the first customers is going to be John Abraham. Well, when the Endeavour was launched, years ago it came at a value of 13 lakh rupees now even i'm laughing while saying that because it's unbelievable but why are we really telling you this because ford's endeavor when it came here to india was like ages ago it it was this one big brawny american suv and it just wowed everybody back then didn't it that's right and the point in bringing this to you is because it was that long ago it was 13 years ago and it took them that long to get a new, new ford endeavor out they yeah updated, revising, but finally we have an all new Ford Endeavour here. But this time around, it's not the only big, beefy American SUV around. There's another one to contend with, and that is Chevrolet's Trailblazer. Yes, that's also been recently launched. And, of course, when you compare things in this segment, you just can't leave out the king. You just can't. <laughs> you just can't leave out the Toyota Fortuner. So we've got all three of them here together to see which one of these top-end, fully loaded variants really cuts it and comes out on top. When it comes to making an impression, we have to give the Toyota a few brownie points. After all, the Fortuner looks sharp and that's despite it being at the very end of its life cycle. In this company, some of the Toyota's visual punch is lost and believe it or not, it's because it's the smallest SUV here. Yes, when it comes to standing out, the competition is clearly between the two Americans. The Trailblazer is longer than the Japanese SUV and it is the tallest and the widest SUV here. 
It looks simply enormous and its blunt design makes it loom larger still. The Ford, however, manages to strike the right balance. Yes, it is huge. Believe it or not, it is longer than the Trailblazer with the longest wheelbase and it's just one millimeter shorter and in terms of width, it's plenty wide. So yes, it is brutishly big. But the tightly skinned sheet metal gives the Endeavour a crisp and modern feel. It is also the one that feels the most exciting and modern on the inside. Now when you get inside the Endeavour, you really feel like wow. I mean, this gives you a sense of occasion. It feels nice and rich. There's this beautiful double stitch leather across the top of the dash. There's a nice glossy wood finish in the center. There's a light beige underneath and all around the car, which makes it feel open and airy. And the colors really combine well. There's the dual LCD screens, which sit aside the speedometer. And of course, the central information display. So it's not only the way it looks, the quality, but it also comes feature packed. Well, when it comes to features, all three are pretty well equipped. They pack touchscreen infotainment systems, Bluetooth connectivity, reversing cameras, automatic climate control, leather seats, power driver seats, and cruise control. But this top-of-the-line Endeavour Titanium Plus offers a bit more. It has automatic wipers, panoramic sunroof, park assist to help you paddle and park, and seven airbags to keep you safe in the first place. The other two competitors offer only two. The Chevrolet also tries to make an impression on the inside. The Camaro-like hooded dials are a clear highlight, as is the large knob control for the automatic climate control. And while sitting in the comfy front seats, you will appreciate the excellent visibility. The cabin experience though feels disappointing, because the plastics don't feel rich or solid enough and the overall design just feels a rung below the Endeavour. When it comes to build quality, the Fortuner feels quite solid. But the plastics are the hard-wearing variety. The dashboard design feels outdated. And the similarity of design to the Innova is a constant irritant. But the Fortuner's front seats are generous. Even in the second row, the Fortuner does a great job of walking a middle path when it comes to space and comfort. The third row is usable as well, just not for very long distances and not for very tall passengers either. The Fortuner is the SUV that offers the most boot space even with the third row up. The Endeavour, however, tries to impress you with its powered liftgate and powered third row of seats. So the third row isn't really quite exceptional. You can see headroom is quite limited. Knee room is, well, just about adequate. Uh, getting in is a bit tricky. So for full-size adults, spending time in here, it's best that you keep it to a minimum. Now the back seat of the Endeavour definitely has enough leg room as you can see. It's ample, in fact. Three can sit here. The central uh, tunnel is a little high and the console does come at the back. But you can still fit in three in the back of this. Now, if you opt for the one with the panoramic sunroof, you'll find that the roof line does come a little low. So taller passengers might find it fouling with the top of their head. But let me tell you, I mean, that apart, it really still is a comfortable back seat to be in. What about the other American? Well, it pretty much sets the bar here. The middle row of the Trailblazer is actually a great place to be. There's ample room. It is the most spacious of the lot. And even the seat cushioning is the best. And its third row is easily the best of the three. Sure, space isn't plentiful, but it will be the most usable here, even for adults. Now let's jump to the other corner and take control. Here on test, we have the top of the line SUVs, which means they are all automatics. The Fortuner uses the familiar three liter four cylinder engine which comes made into a 5-speed auto box. It has a full-time all-wheel drive system and 171 horsepower, which is the least of the three here. The one sitting on the top of the spec sheet heap is the Ford. It has the largest motor, a 3.2-liter 5-cylinder engine. It has 200 horsepower, a 6-speed gearbox and a proper 4-wheel drive system. Hot on its heels is the Chevy 
It has the smallest engine, which is a 2.8 litre four cylinder motor, but it makes a hefty 200 horsepower and 500 newton meters of torque. This is then channelized through a six speed auto box. But the interesting thing is, on the Chevy, the power is sent only to the rear wheels. And without the four wheel drive system, the Trailblazer has a near 330 kilo advantage over the Endeavour. So all things combined, it felt quite impressive on the road. Now this looks like a big lumbering giant, but on the road, it actually scampers ahead like a head. But almost. Whether you're driving at slow speeds in the city, or when you really want to up the pace on an open road, the thing about the Trailblazer is it does it with a fair amount of ease, which makes it really nice to drive. The engine is responsive even at low RPMs, which makes it easy to drive even at low speeds in the city. And put your foot down, and it's got plenty of punch to haul you along real quick. So, when it comes to acceleration, the Trailblazer has an edge. With the Endeavour following hot on its heels, and the Fortuner trails a bit behind. While the Ford's performance wasn't too far off the Chevrolet, it had one big strong point. And credit where credit is due, it's the Endeavour's engine that is the most refined of the lot. And it's a strong engine. In fact, you know, once it gets going, you can really have fun driving it. But the problem really is that it often takes a little while to get going, and that's largely due to the gearbox. The Toyota, meanwhile, felt a bit rough. Now the Fortuner's engine doesn't like to be pushed too hard, rev it a lot and it becomes audible. The Fortuner had the slowest numbers of this comparison test, but on its own, it didn't feel lacking out on the road. If you look at the numbers on paper, the Fortuner is the slowest of the three. But that doesn't mean that it is underpowered in any way, it's just in this comparison because it's happy to pot around in city conditions and even out on the highway, it cruises comfortably. But what about the sense of stability and security that comes with driving large SUVs? Well, all three are traditional body-on-frame SUVs, but some are better than the others when on the road. Now, the Endeavour may be huge and offer that commanding feeling from behind the wheel, but yet, it just doesn't feel that big when you're driving it, especially when you're going around the corners. It just feels so car-like. The Endeavour just demolishes the road. It doesn't let the bumps and potholes filter through. And even when you're going quicker, it's the one that's the flattest and most composed. The Trailblazer starts to feel a bit too old school in this department. It tends to bob around, hop and kick at the rear too. Sure, it is confident around corners, but it tends to roll. The Fortuner isn't the keenest around corners either, but it feels stable and sure-footed cruising on the highway. The ride isn't absorbent enough, and at low speeds in the city, this SUV lets the bumpy road surface creep into the cabin. And what about off-road? The Trailblazer loses ground here as it offers only a two-wheel drive system. It's got the ground clearance to go over the rough stuff. But if you want to do something a little bit more serious, you will have to look at the other two. The Toyota is equipped with a full-time all-wheel drive system and can do a fair bit. But it's really the Endeavour with its electric mode selection and a host of electronic aids that makes off-roading a piece of cake. So we're going to have to admit the Toyota Fortuner, it really has our respects here in this comparison test, especially after what it's gone through, but it is a little bit on the back foot here in this car. Absolutely, because it's the oldest one around. In fact, its newer version is around, well, not round the corner. It's in 2017, so it's a little while away, especially for consumers who are looking for something right now. And it's because, you know, it is a bit long toothed. It's the oldest one here. But it just doesn't quite cut it, whether it's the interiors, the refinement. It just falls a bit short on those fronts. Absolutely, which brings us to the second newest one in this battle, the Trailblazer really hugely impressive especially the performance from that engine the way it drives i know it nice. makes you smile and it's also very good if you want to have seven people on board but yes there's the fact that it doesn't offer four-wheel drive 
the other two do and at that price it just starts to feel a bit expensive and whilst we're talking about price even the interior quality you know when you spend that kind of money you expect something you expect a sense of occasion and the trailblazer just doesn't offer that it falls short in terms of quality as well and that's really where the endeavor shines i mean you walk into that cabin and you say wow you know it feels so modern it feels rich that's Look. not its only strength i mean the endeavor is a perfectly capable package its engine is really good right up there in the competition and then of course there's that sweet ride and handling package yeah and even sitting in the back seat is really comfortable because the ride quality is definitely the best of this bunch so when you consider it as a package i think it is really the endeavor that comes out ahead whether you're on the back seat or whether you're behind the wheel this is the suv that appeals to you and it's the one you should buy